Okay, so Pi News episode 85, and it has been an incredible four weeks since the last Pi News. If we just log into one of the new operating systems that have been released since the last episode of Pi News. So if we go to that episode, which is this one. Since then, we've had Chrome OS on the Pi. We've had Pin OS, which is a multi OS launcher. We've had a really good bootloader update. We've had Interia Android for Raspberry Pi 5. We've got Windows 11 on Raspberry Pi 5, and I've also installed Windows 10, but I haven't done a video. And I've got Steam working on that. Not great, but it's working. And we also got Android TV from Consta Kang. So this is based on Android 13, but that's not all. So if I minimize this, you'll see that I'm using Ambien. And I haven't done a video on this yet. Uh, this is the one based on Cinnamon. And uh, if we go to their site, which it does on its own, and we have a look at uh, Arch64, and if we scroll down, we have Raspberry Pi 5. And there's not just one version they release. So it's based on Bookworm. There's Bookworm Cinnamon. But if we scroll down here, they've got versions for GNOME, XFCE, i3, KDE Plasma, and they're all available to download. I'll put a link in the description. But uh, yeah, Ambient has some really nice support. Uh, if we go into their menu, just to show one thing, they do Ambient config, so a bit like Raspberry config. And there's a software part on here where you can automatically install various bits of third-party software. So what else have we got on Raspberry Pi 5? Consta Kang has released Lineage OS 20, which is based on Android 13. We also got Slackware ARM builds for Raspberry Pi 5, and thanks to Lucas Knight for letting me know about this one. I mentioned PinOS earlier on. The Pin website is also available. You pick what sort of storage you're using, so say USB drive, and tell it what sort of storage. Tell it you've got a Raspberry Pi 5. Obviously, as you could see, it's available for other Raspberry Pis as well. And all the operating systems are in here. And my operating system, which is based on Raspberry Pi OS with KDE Plasma and various different things installed, is actually available on this. So you can install all of these operating systems. So Android, Android TV, uh, there's a new version of MX Linux which has come out, Raspberry Pi OS, Ubuntu. They can all be installed on one USB device or SD card and you can switch between which one you boot. If you want to know more about it, I've already done a video on Pi 5 and Pin OS. But the Pin website is just a different way of doing it. But yeah, really pleased that my build was added. We also had Lacquer Nightly Build, so this is RetroArch on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and if you go into some of the more recent folders and you scroll down, you'll see that there are Pi 5 versions available to download and you'll be downloading this image. I've already downloaded it and I'll show it in a second. And if we scroll through, you can see various different systems are on there. There is a PS2 on here, but actually I don't think this is uh, really the one tailored for a Pi 5. I think it's just been ported because if we find it, where's a PS2 joypad? Uh, here we go. If I try to launch something, you'll see that uh, what it wants to launch it with is PlayStation 2 Play, which I'm pretty sure is not an ARM-based emulator but it doesn't work anyway if I try and launch it it just goes back to the page but I think other things are working so if we try we've got sensible world of soccer let's try running it with DOSBox Pure and you can see the game launches and everything works as it should but it's still just as hard as it ever was so let's quit out of that and show a bit of Doom RetroPie and we had a great build of RetroPie. So Doom the way Pi did from Rapid Edwin 08. This is on the RetroPie forums. And uh, I'll also show a little bit of this because this is very impressive. Now this is really well put together. Uh, so there's a load of Doom on here. If we click on ports, you can see all the different versions of Doom that we've got, loads and loads of them. They're already included. But we also have Dreamcast, PlayStation 2, and all sorts of systems already installed. There's also a desktop on here as well. So we're going to RetroPie and we get a desktop. It boots up the Trinity desktop environment and it makes it really easy to copy your ROMs over. So basically because we have a full file system in here, so I've got access to my USB stick which is in there, um, but also I've got access to the RetroPie folder and so I can put all the ROMs I want for the various systems and get that all up and running. So great work with this build. And if we log out, it will take us back into RetroPie. 
And if I wanted to go back and launch PS2, it's as easy as clicking on it and start, and we can launch a game. And from what I've seen so far, it's running really well, although I do need to configure my controller and really get my light gun set up with this. So I'm back on my KDE Plasma build and uh, let's have a look at the current situation about stock. So this is RPI locator and as you can see there are loads of Pi 02Ws around which is really good because the Pi 02W stock was so constrained on those because it's such a low cost device but really powerful for what it is, great for handhelds and things like that. Um, but if we go down to the Pi 5s you can see that all of these are green so all of these have stock and it's not just the UK, they are in lots of places. I don't know if the second page is also going to be Raspberry Pi 5. It is. So some more here, look, in the US. All sorts of places, the best I think I've ever seen it. That's very impressive. And Pi 4s are all over the place as well. And that kind of leads on to this next video, which I haven't watched yet, but I'll watch it and, uh, and let you know a little bit about it in a second. So it's Jeff Geerling and he's gone over to CES and he's met up with Eben Upton. So lots of information about AI if you're interested in doing that with the Raspberry Pi 5. Also information on Compute Module 5. Eben talks about being able to manufacture 400,000 Pi 5s a month. There's some information in there about the official Pi NVMe adapter. So great video, I'll put a thumbs up on it. And uh, the last story was uh, actually one that I was going to cover next, which is basically that there is another Raspberry Pi store in the UK. This is in Leeds this time. We already have one in Cambridge. And if you want to see where Leeds is in the UK, so it's up here, uh, up north from where I am. I'm right down in Devon. And uh, we also have the store in Cambridge as well. So next up from Facebook, uh, we've got a 3D printed case, uh, which also takes an NVMe base inside it, the Pi Moroni one. And uh, this one is called Pi NAS. And uh, I'll let you read the comments. I'm not gonna show them on my channel. And you can see there's a few more pictures there. Uh, next up from Raspberry Pi News, this Pi Dex is quite an impressive looking piece of kit. A doomsday computer. There's a video there as well, so I'll link this story so if you want to watch the video. So they're saying this is the first Raspberry Pi 5 Cyberdeck. Rugged waterproof box, 7 inch touchscreen, a little 1 inch OLED display, backlit keyboard. <laughs> Very important for when street lamps go out post apocalypse. Power bank, USB with 4 ports, RJ45 splitter, USB to 3.5, a big red toggle switch as well. It is just a really nice looking build. Uh, a lot of work's gone into it. Yeah, very impressive. This is a GitHub all about magnification software. This project aims to build a video magnifier based on Raspberry Pi and its camera. It can be used to see printed text or images at a larger scale or to identify small parts like SMD electronics. So if you have limited sight, might be worth checking that out. Now another one from Facebook here, presenting the Pi Beast. This tower contains 11 Raspberry Pi 5s in a Geek Pi cluster case. The scope is to have a Kubernetes cluster with highly available control plane composed of three control planes and eight worker nodes. And you can see from the picture here, it does look very impressive. Probably quite noisy with those three fans running all the time. I always used to not use the fan. I used to leave the lights on and just have an ice tower cooler on my Pi 4. And it worked really well. I really liked that as a case. That was my main case for a very long time. From Hackaday, Raspberry Pi does its best retro PC impression. So you can see the Pi in here, but this is the picture I really like. Uh, you can see that they're using the micro SD card as, uh, well, looking like a floppy disk. Uh, and it looks like a CRT monitor as well. Very nice. So I'll link that in the description. And last up, I've had a very interesting package arrive. This is from 52Pi and C Studio, and it is a water cooler for Raspberry Pi 5. And uh, so here's my Raspberry Pi 5 with my ice tower cooler on it. And just to give you a sense of scale, the water cooler is massive. It's got a couple of pipes, it's got a power adapter to power it, comes with some thermal pads and some screws and things. It's really thick copper on the bottom of this, which is going to uh, touch all the main components on the Pi. And uh, yeah, I definitely look forward to playing around with this. It is a real piece of kit. It's very, very solid. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.